Welcome to the Secrets of the Bible Channel. We are gathered today to meditate on one of the most extraordinary miracles of the Old Testament, where Joshua, led by faith and trust in God, orders the sun and the moon to stand still so that the Israelites can win a decisive battle. The episode we are relating takes place around minus 1200 BC, when the Israelites, after 40 years of wandering in the desert of Sinai, are finally about to take possession of the Promised Land, as God promised them. Under the leadership of Joshua, Moses' successor, the Hebrew tribes have arrived at the borders of Canaan. But many peoples already occupy this land, the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Jebusites. Israel will have to fight fierce battles to prevail. Among the Canaanite cities, the city of Gibeon stands out for its power. Its inhabitants, aware of the danger, hatch a ruse, pretending to be a distant people. They deceive Joshua and make him sign a peace treaty. Furious at learning of the deceit, the Hebrew leader nevertheless decides to abide by the pact. The Gibeonites thus become allies of Israel. This is not to the liking of the other Amorite kings, who form an alliance to punish the renegade city. This is when Gibeon calls on Joshua for help. The die is cast. A decisive battle looms in which the chosen people, the people, must impose their supremacy over Canaan. Let's pause here and assess the numerical superiority of the enemy armies compared to Israel. That day, as Joshua and his army arrive to relieve the city of Gibeon, the situation is extremely precarious for the people of Israel. Indeed, they face a coalition of five powerful Amorite kings determined to subdue the city that has made peace with them. The biblical texts tell us, Joshua chapter 10 in particular, that the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmath, Lachish, and Eglam have allied against Gibeon. Their combined forces form an imposing army with many seasoned soldiers, as well as chariots and horses, major military assets for the time. For their part, Joshua and the Israelite warriors have just emerged from decades of wandering in the desert. They lack experience in the city, of a sedentary art of war practiced in Cana. Moreover, not being equipped with chariots, they find themselves at a flagrant disadvantage on this difficult terrain. It is estimated that the army of Israel did not exceed 2,000 men, while the Amorite troops were probably two to three times superior in number. In addition, the Hebrew soldiers were on foot, while the enemy battalions had hundreds of chariots, fearsome war machines at the time. The Amorite kings had also chosen a site offering a decisive tactical advantage, the Valley of Agilin, a narrow passage conducive to ambushes and difficult to access for an infantry army. Everything was in place for a complete military disaster for Israel. However, despite this immense numerical and strategic inferiority, the Israelites do not tremble because their confidence lies in the strength of the Eternal, rather than in the multitude of soldiers or chariots. Under the leadership of Joshua, they marched boldly, assured that their God will fight for them if they remain faithful. This is why, militarily cornered, Joshua does not hesitate to beg for divine intervention through a cosmic miracle. Lifting his eyes to the sky, he implores in chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, in the valley of Ajalo. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. There has been no day like that, before it or after it that the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Against all logical expectations, the prayer is answered, and it is Israel who will ultimately win a resounding victory. For God, no numerical disadvantage is prohibitive when faith remains unshakable. Just imagine this wonder. The sun and the moon, these celestial bodies which since time immemorial have danced their cosmic dance with God. Perfect regularity suddenly stopped in their course by the voice of a man. What a striking demonstration of the power of God who overturns the very laws of nature to answer the prayer of his faithful servant Joshua. The stakes are considerable if the Hebrews win the way to the promised land will be open to them, but in case of defeat the dream cherished for decades will be over. Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, in the valley of Eidolon, and miracle, the sun and the moon stopped their race across the firmament. Jewish tradition interprets this prodigy as a cosmic miracle, with the celestial bodies actually immobilizing in the sky. The sun is even said to have receded to prolong the day, so that victory would be complete. In any case, the result is there. 
the enemies of Israel are vanquished, and the road to the land of Canaan opens up to the Hebrews. The consequences of this battle are decisive. The coalition of Amorite kings is broken, paving the way for the conquest of the land of Canaan. Through this striking miracle, God confirms his support for his chosen people. The news spreads like wildfire striking minds. Henceforth, the reputation of the God of Israel precedes the Hebrew tribes. From an astronomical point of view, rational explanations have been put forward. Some evoke a prolonged solar eclipse amplified by moonlight reflection. Others an exceptional mirage or refraction of the sun's rays, but none fully explains the phenomenon. Whatever the physical reality of the prodigy, the biblical account above all emphasizes the theological meaning. Through the prayer of his servant, God intervenes and diverts the laws of nature for the victory of his people. A magnificent demonstration of power and love which foreshadows, centuries later, the salvation offered to all in Jesus Christ. The extraordinary episode of the sun standing still at the voice of a man prompts us to ask, who then was this Joshua that the Eternal would thus hearken to his prayer in such a spectacular way? What were the qualities of his relationship with God that earned him such intimacy? The Bible gives us precious Joshua's insights into the life of this man who walked so closely with his Lord. Joshua is above all a model of faithfulness, who accompanied Moses most closely throughout his mission. Already during the Exodus, Joshua stands out as a valiant warrior led by an unshakable faith. Let us remember the battle against the Amalekites, when Joshua leads the troops into battle while Moses intercedes with arms raised on the mountain. What complementarity in the service of the chosen people. Later, Joshua will be one of the twelve scouts sent to explore the promised land, and while ten of them see it as an unconquerable country, Joshua shows complete confidence in God's power. This spirit of faith will earn him God's choice to lead his people to the conquest of Canaan. Even in old age, Joshua's spiritual vigor does not weaken. Before dying, he passionately declares, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15 What admirable devotion! What a life wholly consecrated to his God! Thus, over the years of wandering in the wilderness, a relationship of deep trust and intimacy is forged between Joshua and the Eternal. The servant knows how to recognize the voice of the master who speaks to him and the Lord for his part. Seizing Joshua, a man after his own heart, to whom he can entrust his life. So when the time comes to enter the promised land, it is quite naturally to Joshua that God gives the heavy task of leading Israel, succeeding Moses. The passing of the torch happens smoothly because Joshua is ready. The spirit rests on him to lead the fight of faith. Also, when the decisive battle against the coalition of Amorite kings arises, Joshua does not hesitate to rely directly on the Eternal, and his bold prayer is answered because his relationship with God is marked by absolute confidence. My friends, friends, may we walk in the footsteps of Joshua and cultivate, as he did, a deep communion with our Lord, an unshakable faith which knows how to see the exploits that God can accomplish in us and through us. Then. He will use us for great things and be attentive to the voice of our prayers. Like Joshua, let us dare to ask our God for great spiritual victories, even if it means stopping the course of the sun or moving mountains. For nothing is impossible for him who made manna rain in the desert and who stopped the Jordan. Let us move forward with faith. I invite you to meditate on the lessons we can draw from this amazing story. First, it reminds us of the almighty power of our God. He who created the universe and the stars can also suspend their course at will. Nothing is impossible for the Eternal and His plans are successful. Sometimes fulfilled in surprising ways, upsetting our certainties, let us always keep this truth in mind. God is master of His creation. Next, this miracle highlights the power of prayer and faith. When the hour of battle strikes, Joshua does not waver. He turns directly to God with a burning prayer, and he is answered beyond all hope. What a lesson for us. In adversity, let us know how to turn to the Lord with confidence for he listens to and answers the pleas of his children. Finally, the sign granted to Joshua manifests God's love for his people. By granting victory to Israel, he opens the way to the promised land and long-awaited deliverance. God proves faithful to his promises and comes to the aid of his people at the decisive moment. What comfort to know that centuries later, he will also send his only son to deliver humanity from sin and death. 
Yes, brothers and sisters, Joshua's miracle already heralds the redeeming love of our Savior Jesus Christ. In his name, let us keep the faith because he has overcome the world. Let us ask him to strengthen our faith so that, like Joshua, we may be ready to undertake anything for his glory. Let us also pray to discern the Gibeons of our life. Those places where we still need to firmly plant the banner of the Lord. May the Holy Spirit spur us to action and make us active witnesses of the gospel. Then, even if we have to fight fierce spiritual battles, victory will be achieved. The Son of Righteousness will dispel the darkness of sin and death, and we will enter the eternal joy of the promised land. There has been no day like that, before it or after it, that the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Let's pause for a moment on this extraordinary sentence that concludes the account of Joshua's miracle. There has been no day like that. The text here emphasizes the unique, exceptional, even extraordinary nature of the event that has just occurred. Never before had the Eternal thus frozen the course of the sun and moon to us. Transcripts provided by Transcription Outsourcing, LLC. This day will forever remain engraved in memories as an uncommon divine manifestation a spectacular eruption of God's power in the history of his people. A day like no other, which will mark a turning point and open a new era for Israel. This unique day opens wide the gates of Canaan to the Israelites. It allows them to defeat a formidable enemy coalition. It strikes minds and hearts with an effect of terror, confirming that the God of Israel is indeed the living and almighty God. From now on, everywhere they go, the fame of the accomplished miracle will precede the Hebrews, striking peoples with amazement and fear. One understands that in the Jewish tradition, this episode holds utmost importance, to the point of being commemorated every year during the Hanukkah feast. But beyond its historical meaning, this account possesses an immense spiritual and theological significance. It teaches us fundamental truths about God and our relationship with Him. First, it strikingly manifests divine omnipotence, stopping the sun and moon. What sane human being would even dare formulate such a prayer? Yet at Joshua's voice, the miracle occurs against all odds. This demonstration of supernatural power loudly proclaims that the Eternal is master of the universe, he who created all its laws. Nothing is impossible for him, and sometimes in history, he displays his strength in a spectacular way to reveal his glory. Let us praise this magnificent God. But this account also teaches us that our Lord desires to listen to and answer the prayers of his children. What intimacy Joshua nurtures with his God to the point of addressing such a bold request to him. And what a wonderful answer he obtains. My friends, let us be encouraged. The Eternal makes himself available to anyone who invokes him with faith. He can move mountains provided we present them to him confidently in prayer. He alone knows the day and hour when divine intervention will prove necessary in our life. Let us remain vigilant. Moreover, this episode reveals God's steadfast love for his chosen people. At the crucial moment when their future hangs in the balance, he comes to their aid and grants them victory. In this way, he preserves the fulfillment of the promises made to the patriarchs. What comfort to know that centuries later, God will also send his only son to save the world. In Jesus, the Eternal's redeeming love for all humanity will be manifested. He forgets none of his promises. Thus, Joshua's miracle teaches us to know our God better, almighty indeed, but also close to us. Faithful to keep his commitments ready to write again today, through our lives, new exploration, provided we ask him with faith. Then dare we like Joshua, lift up our eyes to the sky to discern the signs of the present times. Let us identify the decisive spiritual battles that await us, and let us resolutely move forward alongside our God, for He eagerly desires to grant us great victories. May we one day be able to say, as on that famous day of the miracle, there has been no day like that, where the Lord heeded our voice and fought for us. Let us stand ready for such days of glory, and may sons of spiritual exploits come, stopped in their course by our Almighty God. To Him be the glory. Amen.